That's, that's, a, that's a really wicked pastor or shepherd here. Now, obviously, we can see some, um, the, the, the New Testament where, where um, the correlation with Jesus Christ being the great shepherd, being the good shepherd, being the shepherd, right? And how, when, remember when John the Baptist doubted, and he's like, are, are you the Christ? Or we look, do we look for another? And he told them, what, what, did, what did he say unto them? He said, you know, the, the, the sick are healed, the gospel's being preached, and he said all these things. And did you notice in this verse that these are all things that, that are brought up? He says, bound up that which was broken, um, healed that which was sick, brought again that which was driven away, and sought that which was lost. So, obviously, Jesus Christ fulfilled perfectly what, it, you know, what the good shepherd all the, the qualities and attributes of that. But as under shepherds, as pastors, obviously we're not Jesus Christ, but the pastor also has this job. Now, even if you don't have the gift of being able to supernaturally heal someone, you can still be looking for and helping physically, yeah, as much as you can, but, but spiritually. There's a lot of people who are spiritually diseased and have sickness and need help and need guidance and need instruction and, and can use the extra attention to, to bring them back and to bind up that which is broken and to seek that which is lost. And, um, you know, that's, that's a much different attitude of, of leading and watching over than, than ruling with force and cruelty, obviously. Force and cruelty, I mean, that's like, I mean, people who are doing that, that's like a cult. I mean, I can't even think of, of bad churches that are, that are ruling with force and cruelty unless you're just in a full-blown cult of, of, like, just totally weird stuff. But um, let's keep reading. Verse number 5, the Bible reads, And they were scattered because there is no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. So one of the problems with not having a church, not having a pastor, not having a pastor that's, that's looking out and doing his job is that the sheep are going to be scattered. They're gonna, they're, no one's going to be joined together. They're going to be kind of off doing their own thing. And there's no one also watching out for the predators, for the people who are lying in wait to deceive, and, and the wicked people out there, they're, they're out to destroy. And this is one of the reasons why it's so important to get in church and get into a good church. Get into a church where you're being fed because God didn't have, doesn't have this in Scripture just for no reason. It's not like, oh, it's no big deal. You know, get over it if you're offended by God using the term sheep to describe his people. And I don't care if the world's going to mock that. And I don't care if people who are real proud and haughty want to mock, oh, you're just a sheep. You know, you know what? These are, this is the example that God is using. And maybe we can humble ourselves and not think that we are so great and perfect and nothing's ever going to affect me and sin's never going to get me and, and it's never going to get the better of me. How about we look to the biblical example and say, maybe I could use a shepherd to help watch over so that I don't get devoured by the enemy, by the destroyer, by people who are out trying to do harm. And if you have a humble attitude, you can fall in where God would have you to fall in, and you can look for good pastors, you can look for people who are going to be doing their job right and get involved with that flock. 